Our next hero is someone who had a similar background but in a totally different area. He comes from Isfahan, where Iran is today, the Persian Empire. A young boy from another very wealthy home. His father was the chief of a village known as Jayyan in Isfahan. And this man, he was the chief of the village, he looked after his children. His son was also the favorite to him. Subhanallah. He did not leave his son. The son's name was Salman. Salman from Persia. Salman al-Farisi. Subhanallah. This Salman radiallahu an, young boy, his father loved him again, a wealthy person. You could see that he was from a very wealthy background, but he was very deeply involved in what his family was involved in. They were the leaders of the fire worshippers and those who worshipped the sun. They were known as Al-Majus. So he used to be in charge as a young boy of keeping the flame alive. So he would bring for it fuel all the time and people worship the flame. And he used to tell himself, you know, I keep the flame alive. I bring the logs, I bring everything. And then people are worshiping the same fire. And it's me who's in charge. A young boy, he was very young. So his father used to keep him in the home and within the vicinity, never allowed him to go anywhere. And he never ever interacted and mixed with people. One day, his father being a big business, Businessman, his father was very busy and something important needed to take needed to happen. He had a job that he could not do. So he told his son, Oh my son, I want you to go to the marketplace to do this and come back immediately. The son says, No problem, excited youngster. So what did he do? He took whatever his father told him and he was going to the marketplace. And suddenly he noticed people singing in a church. For the first time in his life, he saw Christians, people of the book. So he stopped and he watched them. These people are not worshipping the fire. Wow. What is it all about? He looked for a little while and he decided, let me go into the church. So he walked into the church and he stood for a while. He listened to what they had to say. Someone spoke to him. He asked a few questions and he told himself, you know what? This is much better than what we are doing. Subhanallah. Look at the intelligence of the youngster. We are worshipping the fire. My people are worshipping a fire that I keep alive. And this, these people are actually praying. They are calling out to a power. Subhanallah. People of the book. May Allah grant them goodness. It is reported that they were upon the true Christianity. Wallahu a'lam. But they were truthful in a way that when he asked them, where is the origin of this faith? They led him to Jerusalem. They told him it is in Asham. If you go to the region where Palestine is today, subhanallah, they told him you will find the roots of this particular faith. So he decided I'm going to go there. Youngster, very brave. When he went back home, he had forgotten to go to the marketplace. It was too late and he couldn't go. So his father told him, did you do what I told you? He says, no, dad, I actually saw a group of people worshiping and they were worshiping a God, not the fire. They are known as Christians. And you know what? What they are worshiping is better than what we are doing. His father was very angry, upset. Salman al-Farisi, subhanallah. His father was angry and upset and told him, you know what? These people are bad and they are wrong. There is no goodness in their faith. But because his father was very worried that this man was, this youngster was going to renege, turn away from the faith of his forefathers, they tied him with a leg iron, literally with a chain. They tied him in the house. He could not go out. He was jailed in his own house. Look at how the similarities are with Mus'ab ibn Umair radiallahu anhu. This was Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu. So he sent a message to the church to say, I am the young boy. I am part of your followers. I am stuck at home tied up. If a caravan is going to Asham, where the religion comes from, please let me know. I will make a plan. I want to join the caravan and I want to run away from home. So he wanted Christianity so desperately because he knew that it is a far better faith than that of worshipping the fire. So now when after some time the caravan was going and they sent him a message so he made a plan and somehow he managed to get out of that leg iron that he had some trick he used we don't know exactly what some of the narrations make mention of how exactly it happened but he got out of it and he ran away he went into the caravan and he arrived in a sham such an excited youngster his dream was fulfilled he went to the root where the faith was and there he met with the top bishops the archbishops and he went to the leader of the lot and he told them his story and he said I'd like to stay with you and I'd like to be from amongst those who serves you and who learns the man says no problem 
So Salman al farisi spent some time there, but he noticed that this leader had a lot of bad habits. He was stealing the money of charity. People were being charitable, donating to the poor, and the leader of the church was taking the money and eating it himself. And he was keeping it in a treasure. And one day, the man died. When the man died, all those who were his followers and the top followers, the senior clerics, they had come and they were praising him and so on. And Salman came out and he says, you know, I stayed with this man. He was a crook. They were very angry. What do you mean he was a crook? He said, look, he used to stash away all the wealth that people gave for charity. They said, that's not true. He said, wait, before you make up your mind, let me show you where it is. I know where he used to hide it. So he took them and he showed them and there was a whole lot of treasure that was definitely there. They were very angry and upset. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Anyway, another man took over. And Salman al farisi says he was such an honest, upright leader of the Christians. He was such a good man. At that time, I loved him the most from all people ever at that time. And what happened is when he was about to die, I went to him and I told him, do you know what? You know my story. I want to follow the unchanged scripture. I don't want to follow the changes that we are noticing. And I know that you are an honest person. Tell me, who do I go to from here? So this man says, you know what? You can go to Al Mawsil in Iraq. There is a person with this name. He is honest and he preaches the unchanged Bible. So Salman al Farisi, after some time, he succeeded to travel to Al Mawsil. And there he met with the other man. And indeed, he was an honest, upright man teaching the, the Christian faith. And Salman was a solid Christian. Subhanallah. Yet his father was still worshipping fire. He did not even have any news about his father. And after that, this man also, when he was at his deathbed, Salman al farisi went to him and told him, Do you know my story? I want to follow the unchanged Bible. And I want you to tell me where do I go to meet a truthful person because I've seen others who have been untruthful. So that man told him, Go to an nasibin another place, a certain area towards a Sham from Iraq, between Iraq and Sham. And you will find X and follow him a certain person and he will be a person who will lead you to what is right that exactly happened subhanallah and after that the same thing happened there we at the deathbed Salman al farisi asks him again where should I go and he led him to Ammuriya he said go to Ammuriya you will find a leader and that leader will follow you so when Salman traveled again as a youngster to Ammuriya he went and he met one of the leaders of the Christians a very good man who taught him a lot of goodness Finally, when that man arrived at his death, subhanallah, look at how many people were dying one after the other. But when that man arrived at his death, Salman al farisi asked him, look, I need the goodness. I want unchanged scripture. I want to worship Allah. I want to worship God. Please lead me to what is right. I don't want to be lost. So that man who was one of the bishops of Ammuriya, he told him, look, now there are no more honest people. But we have arrived at a time when a messenger has to come from Allah Almighty. A messenger has to come and it is reported he will come in Arabia. You see a lot of the Jewish people shifted to near where Medina was, to Arabia, because they knew from their scriptures that this is the description of the land where the final messenger is going to come. That's why they were found there. But when he came and he was not from amongst them, he was from amongst the Arabs, they decided we don't want to accept this man. Why is he not from amongst us? May Allah protect us from racism and may he protect us from rejecting the truth when it comes from people of a different nationality or people from a different race altogether. May Allah grant us a lesson, my brothers and sisters. So here Salman al farisi when he heard that it is a rocky land, and between the two rocky deserts, there is a greenery of palm. He decided, inshallah, one day I will go there. Anyway, the man who told him this passed away. And after some time, there was a caravan of business people who came from the Arabian Peninsula. And Salman began to ask them questions and found that they were indeed from a land that he wanted to go to. Look at how Allah takes him from where to where. So Salman decides, you know, I've got a few of these animals with me. Can I give them to you? They were people from the Kalb tribe. I give them to you and you take me to Arabia. They said, no problem. They took his animals, they took him. When they got to a place known as Wadil Qura, they told him, right, we are enslaving you. You are now a captive of ours and you now will be sold in the market. He was shocked. He was shocked, but he knew that Allah will not do something bad to him. So they sold him to someone who was a Jewish man. And the Jewish man took him in Wadi Al-Qura. 
and Salman began to work and he worked very hard subhanallah and he worked so hard and after some time the cousins of this man one of them came to Wadi Al-Qura and bought Salman off his own cousin and who was this cousin the cousin was from Banu Quraida they had settled around Medina so Salman he decided, okay, I'm going with this new master of mine. Let me go. He was a free man, a free boy who was enslaved unjustly. And here he was being sold from one to the other. But Allah wanted him to get to Medina by at any cost, subhanallah. So when he got to Banu Quraida, he noticed the desert. He noticed the rocks. He saw the greenery, the orchards, and he was so excited. He says, subhanallah, I'm sure this is the place where this messenger is going to come. And he was so happy and delighted. So he worked very hard for this master of his. And one day, another cousin came in from al Madin al munawwara one of the Jewish people had come to see his master. And he was busy on one of the trees taking out some dates. And what happened is he heard this man say that, Oh, Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj, they will be destroyed. Look at them. They want to follow a man who's just come from Mecca. He's claiming to be a prophet and he's claiming to say this and that. Salman says, I got such a, a surprise, such a pleasant surprise. I shook in a way that I almost dropped off the tree. And I quickly rushed down the tree and got to my master with his cousin. And I said, what did you say? Can you repeat it? And my master gave me one smack and sent me back to work. He says, who are you? What do you have to do with this? Go back. He says, but I heard they said that he is living in Quba. So that night, very quietly, I took some dates. Why did I take dates? He says that man in Amuriya, one of those Christian leaders told me that when the messenger comes, there will be clear signs that prove he's a messenger. He will not eat charity, but he will eat from a gift and he will have a mark on his back, that which will be a seal of prophethood. When you see that, you know he is the Prophet. So Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu anh, he decides to take some dates and he went to Quba. He says, I saw this messenger. I looked at him. I was so excited. And I, I said, you know, you people are not from this place. I've brought some charity that I want to give you. These are some dates and I want you to eat them. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam thanked him and accepted the charity and so on. And the Sahaba, some of them began to eat, but Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not eat. Why? Because it was a charity. So Salman says, okay, that's one, one sign done. So after a few days, he heard that Muhammad sallallahu shifted to Medina already. He went to Medina with some more dates and he looked at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He says, oh, he, 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 tell, he told him, you know what? I've brought you a gift because I believe you don't eat charity. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi took it, gave some of his companions and ate from it. So he said, okay, that's the second sign done. This man eats a gift, but he won't eat a charity. Then after some, after a few days, there was someone who died and was being buried and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was at Baqiya assisting in the burial. So Salman had arrived in Baqiya and he noticed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam between his clothing. He was looking very hard to see that mark on his back where his shoulders are and he's trying to look where is the seal. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam looked at him and noticed that he's trying to look at the seal of prophethood. So he actually pushed his clothing off in a, in a way that the seal became clear. When Salman saw it, he began to weep and he kissed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he declared his shahada. He says, I've seen all three signs and told him his story, subhanallah. But now the problem was he was a slave. So what happened? He could not take part in the battle of Badr. He could not take part in the battle of Uhud. Then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, you know what, O Salman, ask your master if we can buy you or if you can pay for your own freedom. So he spoke to his master. His master told him something impossible. He says, I want you to plant 300 date palms that all bear fruit. Now, at that time, when you plant 20, 30, only two or three or five or 10 might bear fruit. The rest of them may die because of weather conditions. And 300 is a whole orchard. That was something that the wealthiest of the lot used to have. So for one man to do it, it's going to take a long time. And on top of that, I want 40 ounces of gold. So Salman al-Farisi, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa asked him what happened. He told him, look, he wants 300 plantations which will not die and they will bear fruit. So anyway, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave him these pods. 
until he had 300 of them. Muhammad ﷺ told him, you go and start digging little holes, you know, in the ground, and I will come and plant each one. So Muhammad ﷺ came and he planted every single one of the 300. And guess what? Exactly 300, all of them grew and bore fruit in no time. Subhanallah. Now, the 40 ounces of gold, Muhammad ﷺ told him, here is this little piece of gold which looked like an egg. Take it and give it to your master. Tell him, right, I'm free now. So Salman al-Farisi was wondering if that was 40 ounces. When they weighed it, it was exactly 40 ounces on the dot. He gave it to him and he was set free. Subhanallah. Salman al-Farisi. I'm going to spend a few moments telling you a little bit more about this man. He was from Persia. But he was loved by the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The battle of the trench. He is the hero of the battle of the trench because when the kuffar of Makkah, they were thousands who were now coming to Medina in order to attack the Muslims. There was no way that they were not going to be entering Medina Munawwara. But Salman al-Farisi was one of those who said, O oh messenger, in Persia, when the enemy comes and we want to block him from coming, we used to dig a big trench approximately 10 meters by 16 meters. And we used to make sure that they cannot even cross the trench so they don't enter the city at all. So let us do it. And subhanallah, that was adopted by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Hence, it is called the battle of the trench. Why? Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu, it was his idea. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirmed it for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This was the young man from Persia. So during that battle, subhanallah, they, they dug in no time in the parts around Medina Munawwara where it was accessible to enter from. Those parts that were quite rocky that it was not accessible from, they did not dig. So it was not a trench dug around the whole city, but it was dug around the parts of the city wherein people would be able to enter from. Salman al-Farisi radiallahu an, he has a story with Abu Darda radiallahu an. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu was another companion whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had asked Salman al-Farisi to live with when they came into Medina Munawwara after some time. So. Abu Darda'i radiallahu anhu, he became the fostered brother of Salman al-Farisi. Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu notices the wife of Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. She took no interest in dressing, no interest in any appearance, no interest in food or anything else. So she, he asked her, what is the problem? So she answered him saying, you know, your brother Abu Darda, he finds no need in this world, nothing, nothing at all, which means he's not interested in his wife. So Salman al-Farisi waited for Abu Darda at night. And when the night started, he began to read long salah. Salman stopped him and told him, do you know what? Go and sleep. So he went to sleep. A little while later, he got up again. He says, go to sleep. A little while later, he got up again. He says, go to sleep. And when the third of the night was remaining, Salman got him up and said, now if you want to pray, you may pray. Then he said, oh Abu Darda, remember, your body has a right over you. Your wife has a right over you. Your family has a right over you. Everything has a right over you. You must fulfill the rights of absolutely everything. And you don't have to overdo it when it comes to acts of worship of this nature. So Abu Darda radiallahu anhu listened to him because he was knowledgeable, but he went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Hey, this is what happened between me and Salman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Sadaqa Salman. Salman has spoken the truth. What he told you is right. You must fulfill the rights of your family members and understand that too is an act of worship. May Allah make us from amongst those. Salman al-Farisi at some stage became the Amir of Madain. Madain is an area in Iraq. And he was the Amir, but he did not change at all. The stipend he used to get on a monthly basis made up of approximately 500, 5,000 coins. He used to give it all away. When they came to build a house for him, they knew that this man does not want a big house. So he asked the builder, what type of a house will you build for me? The builder says, something that will shade you from the sun, protect you from the cold. When you stand up, it will hit your head. And when you lie down, it will hit your feet. That's how small it will be. He says, yes, now you know me. That's the house. And that is what they built for him. And he was the Amir of Madain. On one instance, he went out and there was a man who had come from a sham. And what happened is that man was carrying belongings and, and a lot of goods. So so Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu was the 
the Amir, but they did not know this. He offered to help the man and he started carrying the goods. And this man says, oh, thank you very much. Jazakumullah khair and what have you. And as they're walking people, they met a group of men who greeted him as the Amir, the governor of Madain. And they told him, Assalamu alaikum, oh Amir. So this man from Asham looks, he says, who's the Amir? They looked, they said, the man who's carrying your goods, subhanallah. This was Salman al-Farisi, a simple man. It is reported that, subhanallah, one day he was cooking and baking. So the visitors came to his house and they said, where is your girl, the girl who works for you? He said, no, we sent her to do another task. And I am a person who does not give two tasks to the same person. They will do one thing at a time. May Allah grant us goodness. Imagine he did it himself. How many of us, you have someone working for you. You tell them, clean here. While they are cleaning, you say, don't forget to wash the plates. Before they wash the plates, you said, you've got to cook this today. While they are cooking or before they cook, you tell them, you've got to do this. 20 things. And at the end of the day, you tell them, you forgot to do this and that. But even you are not a computer, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to treat those who work for us with utmost respect. Respect. The last thing I would like to tell you about Salman al-Farisi, on his deathbed he was crying. And when he was crying, subhanallah, he asked for something. And his wife brought it to him. In it, there was musk. Musk is a scent. He said, when I die, I want you to spray this musk on me. Because the angels who come to take us, they love a good fragrance. Subhanallah. So we learn something. And this is why to this day, when people die, what do we do? We enshroud them. And any form of good itr or perfume oil that is used, inshallah, we use it in order to make sure that there is a good scent coming from the person. May Allah grant us a good death. He passed away in Al-Mada'in and he was buried very near to Baghdad. Up to this day, his grave is there. He passed away approximately at the age of uh, late 70s, some say 78 years old at the time uh, of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh. And it is reported that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh who attended the janaza. Wallahu alam, Allah knows best. But this was our hero, Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anh. May Allah grant us a Good lesson. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik.